I'm Camille and welcome to our first ever episode of Food Science. Uh, a little bit about myself and why we chose to do this show. I am a huge cooking nerd and also I'm interested in you know, how things work and scientific explanations for everyday phenomena. Uh, my name is Rachel. I'm also a huge food nerd. I also work in research in neuroscience right now, and so I'm constantly looking for a way to annoy my friends with my science knowledge, and so I'm very excited to combine both science and food together. So on this week's episode, we're going to be making biscuits. We're getting really excited to show you guys all of the processes that happen to make those flaky little dinner rolls that we all know and love so well. This is the very first episode of our brand new show called Food Science, as we mentioned earlier, and through this show what we're going to be doing bi-weekly is combining our love for food and science and investigating and discussing the different properties and mechanics behind all the delicious foods that we eat every single day. And as I mentioned, the episodes will be coming out every other week on Thursdays. Thursdays. The episodes Thursdays. are coming out every other week on Thursdays. This is actually one of my mom's favorite recipes. Every holiday she would bring it out. It is so super simple, so even if you're not a big baker, you should be able to follow along. It's only about five ingredients, takes maybe ten minutes to prep. We're cheating a little because all of our ingredients are pre-measured, but I'm sure you'd be fine as well. And um, it just comes out really like light and airy and buttery, so I'm really excited for you guys to be able to try this and for us to kind of explain to you how it all comes together. So our recipe today only has five ingredients, makes it super simple. Uh, it's got flour, baking powder, which is our leavening agent, salt, the shortening, which is our fat component, as well as the milk. So the most important part of this is the baking powder, which is our leavening agent. And all a leavening agent is, is something included in a recipe that allows the creation of gas. Um, and there are three kinds of leavening agents, physical and biological, which we'll talk about in a future episode, and chemical, which is what baking powder is. Now, what makes chemical leavening agents a little bit different um, is that they involve the creation of the gas through acid-base reactions. All an acid-base reaction is, is the transfer of hydrogen ions from one component to another component in an aqueous solution. And we have an example of an acid-base reaction here. Um, now, specifically with chemical leavening agents, they involve uh, acid-base reactions with sodium bicarbonates, which is this component here. And the reason this is important is because through the acid-base reactions, we have the creation of the salt from the two components here, the creation of water from the H ion and the OH ion, and then this leaves the CO2 as a byproduct. And that CO2 is what creates gas and makes things nice and fluffy. Uh, now, there's a difference between baking soda and baking powder. Baking soda is a component that just has the basic solution in it. And so you need the addition of an acidic component. Um, the equation I just showed you was vinegar. Uh, but you can also add lemon juice, cream of tartar, in order for the reaction to go. Um, now, with baking powder, which we're using in this recipe, it has both the acid and the base component in the powder. And so all you need to add is some water. And that water gives it the aqueous environment that allows the hydrogen ions to move back and forth. Um, and you can actually observe this at home by just taking some baking powder and throwing some water at it. Uh, it fizzes a little bit. If it doesn't fizz, your baking powder is probably bad, so you should get it replaced. Um, now, because they are very similar in component, you can actually substitute baking soda for baking powder, since it has both acid and base components in it. However, it's more difficult to substitute the other way around. So let's say you need baking powder and you only have baking soda. You can use baking soda, however, you still need to add the acid component such as vinegar, lemon juice. The most common one is cream of tartar because it doesn't affect the recipe as much in terms of proportions. And with that, we can go into more of the mechanics of actually creating biscuits. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is add your all-purpose flour to a medium-sized mixing bowl. Next, I'm going to be adding my baking powder and salt. And those are all the dry ingredients, so you're going to want to whisk those together to get them evenly distributed throughout the mixture. Uh, this is pretty typical for any baking that you're going to do, just to make sure the consistency of your end product is consistent. You don't want to end up with a tray with half hard little discs and half blobs of dough. I mean, maybe you do. Blobs of dough sound delicious. 
Anyways, moving on. Once this looks nice and combined, we are going to add our fat in. So for me, that's going to be the shortening. Uh, and then for this next part, I'm going to be using two knives, any old kitchen knives will do, to cut in the fat. Now, a little note on how we're adding the fat to our biscuit recipe here. There are actually two main ways that people tend to use. Uh, the one that I'm doing is going to create little pockets of fat, which, as Rachel will explain in more depth later, are going to help aid in the creation of little bubbles in your final product, little pockets of air. Another way that you can do it, if you prefer a more flaky biscuit, one that you can kind of pull apart, is to actually roll the dough, um, kind of similar to how you would make a puff pastry, and then that way there will be layers of fat interspersed throughout instead of these little bubbles that we're going to end up with. But okay, let's get started with this. So basically just like getting the fat broken down into smaller little blobs. Um, I use the word blobs a lot apparently in cooking. It's a technical term. It's definitely a standardized size. I will say that you're going to aim for about a pea size amount of fat as the kind of biggest one in there. And as with before, consistency is going to be really important for uh, those of us who are not recent college grads. If you have a pastry cutter, you could be using that here as well. I don't, and kitchen knives work just as well. Okay, so you can see that we have tiny little, well you can kind of see, we've got tiny little blobs of fat in with our batter. And the last thing that we're going to do before we get these onto the tray and into the oven is pour in all of our milk. Okay, and then using that whisk again, just to make sure all of the milk to provide that aqueous solution for the reaction that Rachel mentioned earlier. Look at that. Beautiful. Taking just your standard sized spoon here, you're going to put dollops of dough evenly spaced on the sheet, about that size, so kind of like a heaping tablespoon. are in the oven, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about what's actually happening uh, during this process. Now, we talked briefly earlier about the leavening agent component, and that's the primary purpose of putting it in the oven, is you're running this reaction that creates uh, gas and air bubbles, and of course this is accelerated by the increased heat in the oven, so additional heat is more energy, so the reaction happens faster. Um, but at the same time that this is happening, we do actually have this fat component, the shortening, melting and starting to combine with the other components of the biscuit. And what this does is uh, creates a sort of repulsion reaction since fats are partially repelled by water. And because the water components and the fat components are repelling one another, it not only allows for the creation of these air pockets, but the repulsion allows for the actual stabilization of the air pockets. So not only are they being accelerated in their creation by the heat of the oven, but they're also being allowed to stay there in larger pockets and more amounts of them, creating nice light and fluffy and delicious pieces. time making it and we hope you had a good time watching it too. If you did, like the video, comment below telling us what you want us to make in future episodes and feel free to subscribe to us on YouTube to get notifications and be up to date when we release new videos. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter uh, for all the latest <laughs> food science news. Alright, thanks so much for joining us. Our cat's freaking out. Um, please join us again in two weeks when we do our very exciting